Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? We have, well, last time we upgraded our workshop a little bit, so we're a little bit bigger here. We've still only got one bay though, and we're on about $9,600. So we're going to go straight to the phone, and we've got this one here. When driving through another city, I didn't notice a speed bump. Please check out front suspension because of the impression something's not right. So this job here, this is one of the story, well, yeah, you can see, story order. One of the story orders, we can, we've got three jobs there with brakes. That one looks like an oil change and something else. I'm not sure what that is. Um, new engine oil and filter. Replace timing related parts. List provided. So we could do a couple of quick jobs like that. Or we could go straight with the story order. The um, testing the suspension and stuff. I think actually we're going to go for this one first. I quite like the idea of doing this one because we haven't done the oil change and stuff for a while. And that's, we're getting the hang of doing that one. So we'll take that order there, and then we'll come to the story order in a little while. Hopefully, fairly soon, we will be able to advance to the point where we can go to, like, the junkyard and the auctions and things like that. But the problem with doing that is that we do need to spend all of our own money to do a car up, and then go from there. So it, it does take a little while. So what do we need? We need a belt tensioner, water pump. Is that I-4, is it? I think that's I-4. Belt tensioner, timing belt, water pump. And then this one here, oil, felt, oil filter, I4, and change oil. Right, so those are fairly simple. I will buy the parts a minute, and then we can get the car onto the lifter and get started. I think we now have everything. So if we just take a quick look here on the car status, I've got a belt tensioner, a water pump, the I4 timing belt, and then I've got oil filter, and then we can change the oil. Right, so the first job, we just want to put this one up onto the first stage of the lifter and we'll do the the small bits first. We'll change the oil at the end. So if we just lift up the hood there a minute. And so, now there was a way that someone, I, I can't remember who it was, but someone did say that if you click on, is it the star? If we do that and come out, it should highlight it in blue. Yes, there we go. So it highlights the whole thing in blue, which makes it a lot easier to take off and find out what we've got to do. So first of all, we just want to change, uh, take off this belt tensioner. That's one of the ones that we've got to remove. Then we want the water pump, and in order to get the water pump, we're going to need we're going to need lots of stuff. The timing belt cover can't come off yet, so we've got to take off that serpentine belt there. Remove that one. Then the crankshaft pulley. Oh no, uh, that serpentine belt there. The idler roller is going to have to come off so that we can get the cover off for the timing belt. And the crankshaft pulley needs to come off. Take that one out. Then the water pump itself can come off. Remove that one and that one. And then finally we can now remove the timing belt cover. Remove those four there. Nice and simple to get those out. And finally we are down to the actual timing belt. And that's one of the ones that we need to change. I don't think... No, there isn't anything else that's got to be changed. Those, the outlines there are the, the ones that we've got to put back on. So now we can go straight to, not examine two part mount mode, and we can put the new timing belt on, which is that one there. Yeah, the timing belt, the old one, is in very poor condition. Then the timing belt cover can go back on, like that, and do those four up, and then we can mount back the, uh, well, we need the new water pump on here, don't we? So we want a brand new one of those. That was actually a little bit more expensive than the other things. Then the crankshaft, that one's in good condition anyway. The idler roller right there, that one's fine. That one can go back on. And then I think it's just the belts now, isn't it? So you've got the, it's not that belt there. This serpentine belt here, that one can go on. And then, oh no, the, does belt tensioner go next? Belt tensioner can go on. And then there's one more belt to go on here. And there we go, right. That's all of that bit done. Now if I come out of there, I want to come round and I need to get the oil pump. Uh, not the oil pump, the oil filter. Where is the oil filter? That's the bit that we want to try and find next. There's a starter motor. Um, oil filter. Oh, you've got to do it from underneath. Right, okay. Let's come out of here. If I go like that, I can take the star off so that we don't have them highlighted in blue anymore. We can put the hood down. That bit's done. And then the lifter. Oh no, I did that the wrong way. Press and hold. If you just click it, it goes up. And if you press and hold, it brings it back down again. I did it the wrong way around. So we want to lift that one up. 
And the first thing, before you take the oil filter off, this much I do know about cars. Now, I know I say all the time that I don't know anything about cars. I know a little bit. I, I, I kind of, there's some things I can kind of guess my way through. But when you're changing the oil filter, the best thing is to drain the oil out first, especially if you're changing the oil. Then you can take the oil filter off. So you, you do the whole, um, right, so we want to do that. So, yeah, take the oil out. And then once you've dealt with that bit, then you can um, you know, move equipment and... Place equipment back. There we go. Yeah, once you've dealt with that bit, then you can take the oil filter off and you're not going to have a load of oil leaking out everywhere. So if we go like that, then I can go straight to the oil filter itself. Take that one off and then I want to go to part mount mode and we put the new filter back on. Like that. 100%. There we go. It's a beautiful new filter. Doesn't need to be done up or anything like that. Uh, that's it, actually. We don't have to do anything else under there. If we just come around here... We can lower the lift back down. We will have to open up the bonnet again. And we've just got to put a bit of oil into the top. So, uh, what do we do? Oh, you've got to take the, you take the oil fill plug off. And then you just press and hold the button. So, let's be generous. There we go. I'm hoping that's enough. And now you've got to go over there and you check the oil dipstick like that. That's about halfway. So, roughly about the same again, I would say. And then that job's going to be done. A little bit, a little bit. Oh, it's, it's, it's lowering it down. I'm guessing that means it's getting very close to the top of the list. And three quarters full. Uh, now, I was always told that you should try to fill your engine up near to the top. You don't, you don't want to overfill it because that can cause problems. But at the same time, there, that's about what you want. Just a little bit down from the maximum line. You don't want it up to the maximum line because it, it could cause some problems. At least that's what I was always told. It's, just, it's what I've been led to believe. So we just bring that one over there. Now press and hold the car lift. That bit should be done. Let's just go to car status. That's all done. And that's done as well. Beautiful $691 payout. Job bonus 144 257 And the money spent just under $300. we have made... $400 profit on that. Finish. And we're over $10,000. we have hit the $10,000 mark. Excellent. We're now level 5. So we are very... I think it's level 6 that you get to go to the other bits. But anyway, level 5 gives us another available skill point. Um, these back here, strong arms, 50% faster installing and removing. That would be a pretty good one. 5% discount in shops would also be good. And what do we got here? Uh, successful repair chance raised to 55%. We haven't used the repair chance or anything like that. We haven't really worried. Unlock the tire tread tester. Discover tires condition. You can use it through pie menu while in part overview. Okay. That would be a pretty good one. Instantly examine three parts when first time seeing a car. Order, bar order barn, junkyard, and auction. Well, that actually might be really good because we're going to soon be able to do it. Unlocks tablet. Gives you access to shop. Anywhere in your garage... You can use it through Pi Menu or by clicking. Now, that's more like it. I think that would save us more time than anything else. So we'll get that one, I think. There we go. And let's just very quickly go over here and just make sure. I'm, I've got a feeling it's level 6 before you can go to the car auctions and junkyard. We can't get there yet. Nope. Right. Level 6. So it's one more level is all we've got to do. So we'll do that story mode one next. we we'll come over to the phones. What do we got? That's all of the other bits. But anyway, we want the story mode one, so we'll take that one there. Takes a little while. There we go. Ooh. That's a very shiny looking car. So, this one here doesn't have... We've got a lot of parts not discovered. Driving through another city. I didn't notice the speed bump. Please check out the front suspension because of the impression something is not right. Now, I think we can actually do all of this through our part in here. Not the parking, the test path. We take it to the test path which we've got in here, and oop, open up these doors, there we go, and there is our test path. Now, I think we can discover all of the problems with this on here, so we go to that path test, there we go. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes, I do. Now, I was told if you press C, you do get a different view. I'm pressing C, I'm not getting a different view. Uh, v for view? Maybe not. Uh, let me just see if there is a... No, I can't even press escape. Okay, so it looks like we are just... Looking. You can just go forward as fast as you like. Press and hold the front brake. Does that... Uh, you press back on that for that one. Place the rear wheels on the brake tester. 
there we go press and hold the brake you're just pressing backwards for that place the front wheels on the suspension tester so the front brakes are in pretty poor condition now we go for the suspension tester and we just wait while it rattles us around like crazy and we shouldn't actually need to go to the test track to do any of the testing for this we should be able to get everything tested just with this one here this is i think that's the whole idea of this that's just why we've got this like big upgrade so we run through this rear suspension right so we've got six items here front shock absorber and the caps are seriously damaged front shock absorber and lower suspension arms times two uh, everything else is at 80 percent everything on the suspension is all done so we can we should be able to, yeah, we can get out. You can press escape now. That comes out. Um, path test. And what's this? Oh, that's also the path test. So this one is that's another thing for the path. It's all to do with the path testing. So that means that we haven't discovered everything yet. We've got some things discovered, but not everything. Does that mean we still need to take it to the track? To Is it the test track? Uh, move car to another location in the garage. No, uh, garage entrance. So we'll put it by the garage entrance and we'll just see if anything else shows up. If we go and do the actual, um, track. So you click to use the main gate. You've got the test track down here. Yes, that's the one that we want to take. I do quite like the test track. It was quite good fun using it. So we will test everything out on here as soon as it loads. Right. We need the acceleration test first not sure ah this one you can you can't you... Uh, okay I don't know don't know if I like that one acceleration test right so we've done the acceleration test next is the slalom test I think I'd actually I'm gonna have more luck doing this from inside the car than I am any other way going around here it's a slalom test and so now the suspension test this one, oh, we go up straight up through this way. You can go a fair speed on this track. The only one with <laughs> the suspension is all over the place. Really, really wobbly. Whoa, <laughs> easy there. To go. I'm, I'm curious if we do learn anything else by using the track than we do in our garage. I'm really bad at this. I really am. We don't want to go too fast. I need to be able to stop. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, brakes test passed. Okay. Did we learn anything new on that? I'm not sure if we did. I think that everything we just tested there on a track is actually stuff that we learn in our new path testing bit that we've got in our garage. Right, we do find out new things because none of this actually showed up in the, um, the one in the garage. This is all stuff that we've now discovered on the test track. So both of them do end up giving you um, things that you need to sort of discover. So car status now, there's two parts there not discovered. Everything else we have discovered. So we can, we can find all of those. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the car over onto the lifter. And chances are... It might just be a damaged wheel or something like that. It may not have shown up anywhere else. So let's just lift that one up. And now it did say that we would be able to access the, I think really we need to lift most of it up because we, oh, you've got the, you've got the body here. You've got all of this tablet. We can quickly access the shop. That's brilliant. I am going to go, I'm going to work my way through this list here and I'm going to try to buy everything um straight from the shop so that we've got it and we can easily replace it fairly quickly and with two of the front shock absorbers there i've spent a lot i've spent a thousand dollars on parts for this so far i think i've got all of the parts here now i think i've got all of these we've got the two that are not discovered uh but the front drive axles lower suspension arms um is basically it's two of everything so we, we've got the front <laughs> the whole front of the car has been completely obliterated so we are we we do have quite a bit of work today so i'm not actually sure if we're even going to be able to finish this one today i'm hoping that we will but i'm sort of conscious of the fact that i don't want to run too much past a 45 minute episode so we'll take the wheel off i don't think we need to take off anything else there but we do want the wheel off and let's bring that wheel oh no just click it first and then sport tire take the wheel off that was the other thing we got two things that we haven't yet discovered have, don't we so it could actually be rims or something like that because if you drive over a speed hump really fast 
you could cause problems. So those are fine. What about the brake pads? Uh, let's go to part examine mode. There we go. Brake pad. Brake pads are fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with those. I know that we've got... Some of these parts are in red and they're in bad condition. So we, we've got no sort of doubt whatsoever that those do need doing. Front drive axle needs to be done, which I think means we're going to have to take most of the other stuff off anyway. Um, car status, part not discovered. Okay, let's come out of there, and I want to go to part mount. Let's just back out a little bit. Sport tyre, right, these, they're in excellent condition, so they're all fine. It's not. It's nothing to do with the wheels, which means it is something to do with the actual suspension. I think we're going to have to lift the car up to get most of this off. We, we can get these top bits off first, so uh, if I can come round, that's on the body there. Maybe I have to do it like this. I think I've got to do it like this. So, I want to take off the front shock absorber. Front spring. Uh, that's not going to let me do it. So, I've got to ask. Uh, the, the, the sway bar there, that one's got to come out. And down there. And then the front shock absorber can come out. There's one there and one there. So, drop that one down. And if I can zoom back a bit, is that... Right, the, the cap on the top has, all, has been removed. So, to remove the front drive axle... Ah, I can leave the actual wheel part in place and then the rest of it has got to come off. Although, considering that we're removing everything on this, um, just about everything on the car, the, the tie rod, that's got to come out. Then you've got the lower suspension arm, that's uh, only accessible from underneath. I wonder if we can do that with, by replacing everything else first. Front drive shaft, what about that one? Does that need doing? Go to the front drive. Sh oh no, that's saying eighty percent. So that one, that one's fine because we did. We ran some tests, didn't we? We ran a whole load of tests on here. So let's do this outer tie rod over here. We can at least do these bits and we can replace these parts, which will make it a lot easier. We're getting that one from that side, and then you've got the. Oh no, the front shock absorber. You've got to do the sway bar first. Take that one up there and that one down there. Then that one can come out. Front shock absorber. Let's take those. There we go. Um, that inner tie rod, that one will come out. That's got to be done from underneath. There. Condition of... Oh, what about that bearing? The rub... Oh, no, the, ru the rubber thing is fine. Right. So, go back to the car status. We've still got those two parts not discovered. But everything else, the shock absorbers and the caps and suspension arms, it's just the two from underneath. So, let's try putting this other stuff back on and see if it will make a difference, if we can actually put it back on. So we want uh, a brand new one to go into there, and then we want uh, the inner tie rod, that one goes on, that's another new one, and the outer tie rod there, that's a new one, that's got to go on, so we can do that one up from underneath. Then shock absorber, I suspect this one, is this one, this one's made up of a load of parts. Right, hang on, oh! Maybe that, that could be the two that we've, ju we've just discovered, the two. No, hang on, because that's on 34%. That's, that's not right. So if we go car status, I'm pretty sure that it's this, these two here, the front shock absorber. So how do, how do I examine that? Uh, part unmount. Able to part overview. No, I don't want that bit, do I? Let's put this one back on. The front shock absorber there. Because that's on 34%. I reckon it's the spring. That's what it's got. Oh, no, front spring. Well, I changed the front shock, shock absorber. I bought new ones. Oh, I know what we've got to do. We've got to change these on... Maybe we've got to do it over here on the repair bench. No items to work. Well, how do you do it then? Because I bought the bits. I definitely bought those bits. We got the, the, the front shock absorber. Parts, notes, inventory... Take a look here. So you've got that bit there. I've got a front shock absorber there. And that is the front shock absorber on that bit. Are you sure you want to sell? No, I don't want to sell. So I've got to get those two bits, which means... How do, how do you change those apart then? Groups. Here we go. Sell junk. Sorting. Right, so you can't do that. Is there another way to do it? Interior, assemble, move. Right, no, I don't want to do any of those. 
just click on the engine a minute and then we go to uh, examine part part notes examine tools and I have no examine tools right that means we need to go to the part mount mode we want to come over to here accessible from wheel side on lifter it's on the lifter can I move? I can't move over to here at the moment, so uh, press escape from here, and we'll try it from this side, there. Oh no, I don't want to be on that side. I want to come over. I do want to come over to this side. It might be that we got it. If we got to lift it up instead, because it is not allowing us to do it from there. So if I come down here to the suspension part, and then I go to part mount, shock absorber, but it's not allowing me to do individually how do i break them apart so i got i've got to replace if i do that up oh i wonder i wonder i wonder if i go to part unmount mode and then i go to front sp yes that's what we got to do uh front shock absorber cap nope i don't want the front shock absorber cap i want the spring let's try the front spring take that one off nope so why is it forcing me to do it like that? That does seem a little bit bizarre that it would it's, it's making me do it from that particular angle. Whereas, oh, the front steering knuckle. Let's take a quick check at that. Examine mount. What are you like? Oh, you're in excellent condition. So there's, there's nothing wrong with that one. Part mount. Right, for some strange reason, it's not allowing me to change the spring. The spring is fine, it's at 80%, but it's not allowing me to split these apart. So I'm guessing that there is something that we need to do in order to split them apart. That's the engine crane, and we've got other bits here, but I can't replace any of them. We've got the repair bench. I'm going to have a bit of a wander around and see. There's got to be a way that we can take the, those pieces out to like separate them apart. Unless I've just got to buy the, the whole new part. That's, that's about the only other thing that I can think of. Okay, I think I have just found it. i just seen something over here. So let's... I just tried putting that one back on. I'm going to remove the front spring yet again. I bought two new springs as well, just to see if that might have been the thing that was doing it. But I don't think it is. We have here a spring puller. So we can join parts and we can separate parts. So if we separate these parts here... Are you sure you want to separate? Yes, I am. So that's on. Is it working? Oh, I see. It, it does. It works, but it's quite slow. Now I can use and take parts from there, and then I can go to it again. Separate parts again. Yes, I want to separate those. So it's that simple. See, I really don't know anything about running a garage, do I? <laughs> this is... It's it's sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's a lot of fun, but I, I, am, I am actually really enjoying doing this series, and... Let's just see. Right, so we want to join parts now. So I want that one. And I want one of those. Actually, no, I'm not going to use the brand new one. I'm going to use... Go back. Oh, no. Let me let me press escape then. Uh, join parts. So I'm going to go for the 100% new one on there. And then I'm going to go to the 80% one on there. So that I keep the brand new ones. I'll probably sell those back. And then... Yeah, 80% one there, and then you click it, and then you go to that one, and that's a brand new one as well. Are you sure? Yes, I am. So we put those together. It pops them all into place quite nicely, and then as soon as it's done, excellent. We can take parts from it, and then we click on it again, and we can join the parts together. So this time we want... Why have I got an extra front shock absorber? I've no idea. I must have accidentally bought two. Uh, the other 80% one... And then the other full one, yes. Join that back together. Oh, it's, if only I had known that there was such a thing as a spring puller. I didn't even know there were, I didn't even know such a thing existed, to be honest. So there we go. That is how much I know about this job. Um, we can go back onto here. We want to go back to the part mount mode. Front shock absorber. Yes, there we go. That's in that's a much better condition. Excellent. Right, let's pop that one back onto there. I think that is just about everything. Oh, no, we got the tight, the front end sway bar. That one's got to go on. Um, so that goes on there and there. Is that everything that's got to go on this side? I think it is. Don't think there's anything else that's got to go on this side. So let's just move ourselves over to this end like this. 
just sort of slide along. Inner tie rod, that one can go in. Then the front drive axle, that one can go in as another new one. We can go on there. Uh, then we can put the outer tie rod, that one goes on, that one goes up from underneath like that. And then we can put the new front shock absorber on, excellent. That one can go in there. Spin round to the other side and you've got this one here, the sway bar front end link A. See, all of this, I'm, I may as well be speaking Greek for all that I understand about all of this. I, it, literally, I understand nothing about what I'm telling you. Um, it's, it's all completely strange stuff. So let's go to car status a minute. We've got a lower suspension arm on both sides that needs to be done. We've got two parts that have yet to be discovered. So we're making fast progress, very fast progress. So we want to just click it so that it lifts up into the air. And then we can get to it from underneath. Now there are two parts that we don't yet have discovered. We've got this suspension right here, which we need to remove. So we can take that one off. We've got one there. One up there and one on there. That one can come out. And I don't know what else would possibly be missing. Is There's two bits. So let's just move over this way. And we want to go to that lower suspension arm there. So let's do that one. It might, whether it's like the rubber bushing or something inside some of these, the, the bars, because that wouldn't show up under examination, would it? Uh, that brake disc ventilated down. Oh, that's in good condition anyway. It's 80%. It doesn't look like it's in excellent condition, but it is. Oh, there's something at the front there. That's really rusty. Lower suspension arm. So we've got... Right, well, we know that those two are in no good condition. So here, that one's... Rubber bushing is 80%. That one's 80%. So, yes, we want to put all of that back on. Those aren't the bits that we're looking for. We can put that on there and that one on over there. Um, let's move over to this side. We want to put that lower suspension arm on as well. So that one and that one and that one. Yes, those are all in good condition. So we can put the bolt on the top. Uh, the nut on the top, sorry. And then the bolt in there and the bolt in there. Right. That's those bits done. They are in good condition. There was something over here that I seen. It was really rusty. What about this one? Accessible from in the engine bay. Uh, now, it said about the speed bump, but it was... It was I mean, you think that it's at the front, but maybe there's something at the back. I mean, it's, it says part undiscovered, doesn't it? So, where are we looking at? Oh, this is from the front of the vehicle. So, if we go and try to look at the back of the vehicle, it doesn't look like there's very much going to be wrong back here. Everything looks in good condition. You Generally, you see the things. They, they appear to be in good condition. And all the reports that we've done, they also said that it was all good. So, we, we don't kind of need to worry about it. So, let's lower that back down. There were some rusty bits there. Like the, these bits at the front, they, they look like they're in bad condition. So that radi or the radiator fan, that radiator there looks like it's in terrible condition. So let's go to examine. Uh, it can be examined by taking off the car. Exe electric meter. Okay, let's let's take these off because last time we got really we got hung up on this, didn't we? That that was the the bit that really got us was the the radiator and the radiator housing. So if we go like that, and then we can radiator seven percent. It just said there radiator seven percent. Let's go to car status radiator A and the fan B. <laughs> I'm so pleased we did that. So we have discovered which of the bits we need. So we need a radiator A and a radiator fan housing B. That's what we want. So we go straight to our tablet and we can go to the shop. And then we can go to, uh, we just go to the engine, like that, and radiator. So we just scroll down through to the R's. Um, there we go. I just went past it. Radiator fan housing B. That's the one that we want there. And then radiator A, wasn't it? It was that one there. And that's another $200 crumbs. It's getting very expensive here, isn't it? It's getting very, very expensive. So we can go to here. No, I don't want to do that. Um, uh, just click on there scroll around ever so slightly and then I can go to part mount mode radiator there that was in seven percent I don't know why the radiator got damaged going over the the speed bumps like that but apparently it did so we got the radiator fan housing that also got damaged so we take that one the fan itself is in good nick there's two of them why are there two fans I didn't even know that you could get such a thing oh oh there's two there's a big one and a small one I see right uh, that is everything done in the engine. So let's close the hood down. And all we got left to do is just stick these wheels back on very, very quickly. And then I think we will have just about run out of time, actually. So I don't want to uh, part mount. There we go. Yeah, Rim Classic 02. So those are in good condition. I'm so pleased that we managed to find everything 
we, well, finding everything was relatively easy. We, we didn't really have any trouble with that. The only issue I had was not knowing about the spring puller thing that we had to use over there. And that was kind of, that was more me not understanding how a workshop works and um, knowing anything at all whatsoever about using or running a workshop. But I think that we can sort of, that, that, yes, that's not a major drawback, I don't think. I think that we got through it okay in the end. So let's go to here and we um, long click on that one so that it drops down to the ground. And there we go. We've done it. We have successfully mended the car. Everything is in good condition. We've done the whole lot. That was quite a big job as well, actually. Um, so the radiator, that's one thing we're going to have to sort of be wary of as we go through is just make sure that we don't um, get anything wrong on there. So money spent, $1,280. And then we get some bonuses here, 353 for each. So we do end up with this one. I think we, well, we're taking home about $700 for the order. That's not bad at all. No, that's actually less than that. So we're on 10,005. Oh, hang on. No, we do have to take into account, if we go to our inventory, we do have two brand new front springs that we went and bought. Um, so, no, that's $50 for a front spring. Um, if you go to the tablet, let's just take a quick look. You go to suspension and uh, a rear spring. No, I didn't even buy a front, it's a front spring. $100. So you sell them for half price. So I won't sell the springs. What I will do is I will keep hold of them and we will sell everything else. Um, that is really all I got time for today, and where are we on the um, the XP scale? Let's take a look. So we're on 1523 on 1829. So we're on a couple more orders. We'll probably... We do have another story one, current color. Uh, I bought this machine from a friend who needed money quickly, ensured me that the car is working. If something strangely pulls it to the right, and this strange smell like mushrooms. From what I remember, he works behind a desk, not in sales. Anyway... Check what's wrong and make it usable. Uh, I don't really know how you would find out about a mushroom-smelling car. Really not sure about it. Well, it's something to do with a spring. I'd... It's not something... I'd... I don't think we'll get into that. I think that we'll just do a few different orders until such time as we uh, reach level 6. And then we want to head to the junkyard. We've got $10,000. So we ought to be able to get something from either the junkyard or the car auctions. Something like that. Um, in the meantime, let's just quickly go through and sell this and see if we can get some more um, quick and easy cash. That front shock absorber I also bought. So that's 120. I don't know when I bought that. I must have accidentally just bought three. I increased the quantity twice instead of just once. Um, but anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. We will be back next week to continue on with this. And don't forget, on Thursday, we have our random game. If you would like a say in which game that we are playing this week, then head over to last week's episode, which was Don't Starve, and get yourself in on the vote. There we go. That is all of them. Um... That's everything. So, until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.